What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna build this word jumble game with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna create this word jumble game. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so what are we doing in this video? We're gonna build this word jumble game. So we can see we've got a word jumbled up. We can figure out what it is. This is Arkansas, and we can answer and correct, and then we can get a new one, and we can type something else in and incorrect, right? So just a very basic game, but we're gonna learn all kinds of cool stuff with this. And I'm gonna use, uh, United States states for the words. You can use any words you want, and we'll look at that uh, in the video. So head over to our code. I've got a new file I called shuffle.py. It's our basic Kinter starter code. So let's start out creating a function, and I'm just gonna call this shuffle. And inside of here, let's just create a label, and let's call it my label, and that's a label, and we wanna put it in root, and we want the text to equal nothing right now. And let's give this a font of Helvetica, and a size of 48, make it really big. And let's go my underscore label dot pack to pack this on the screen. So first things first, let's create a Python list of all of our words. And I'm, we're gonna create states, so I'm gonna call our list states. And this is just a Python list. Now there's you know a bunch of these, so I'm just gonna paste this in. And I'll push this code up to my GitHub account so you can just copy this, this list, but really any list of words will work where you separate them by commas, put them each in quotation marks, right? So what we wanna do now, first things first, when this thing runs, we want to pick one of these randomly, right? And so there's just a ton of ways we could do this, but there's, there's something that comes in the Python random module called choice that will randomly pick from a list for you. So we can come up here to the top of our program and import that, so we can go from random, import, choice and random just comes with python so we can import choice from that so now we can use choice down here so let's let's pick a word and let's just call it word and that will be choice and then we just pass in what we want to pick from so that would be this right so let's go uh pick random state from list and here let's go list of state words. Okay, and actually let's put this outside of this function. And now we can just, let's come up here and let's go my underscore label dot config and let's, and let's go text equals word, right? So just to see what's going on here. Okay, so oh, I misspelled shuffle, let's go shuffle. And it looks like right here we need font equals to, there we go. Whew, it's Wednesday morning. I'm usually not this draggy in Wednesday morning, but okay. And now we can just call shuffle and run this and run python shuffle.py and boom, we get Texas. So let's create a button real quick called my underscore button. And that's gonna be a button and we wanna put it in root and we want the text to equal uh, pick another word, and we want the command to equal shuffle. And let's go my button, dot pack, give this a pad Y of 20, just to push it down a little bit. So save this and run it real quick. So let's go pick another word, Oregon, Idaho, Vermont, and you can just see it's shuffling through and picking a different word every time. So, okay, so far so good. Now we're picking a word. Now we need to shuffle it around. We need to change the letters around. So let's look at that. So what we wanna do now is break apart the word, right? And so that we can take each letter from the word and put them into a Python list that we can then shuffle, right? So to break apart any kind of string, you can use the list function. And a list will just take a thing and make it into a Python list. So we can go, uh, let's just say, let's make a comment here and let's go uh, break apart our chosen word. And we can go, let's just call this break apart word. I don't know. And this will be list. And then we just want to pass in word. 
right? So now we can, let's just print out break apart word under the terminal just to see what this is returning. So if we save this, head back over here, reload, and let's click this, Colorado. Now when we close this and look at the terminal, we can say it creates a Python list with each letter in that word as an item in the list, right? So this is very cool. Now we can just shuffle this list and it will shuffle all those words. So, and that's really, really easy. So let's do that. So let's get rid of this print thing. We don't actually need to break that. We can use the, the shuffle function, which is just shuffle. And what do we wanna shuffle? We wanna shuffle break apart. Now shuffle is a part of random, which comes with Python, but we still have to import it. So let's come up here and let's go from random, import, shuffle. Okay, so this will now shuffle this. So now if we print out, oops, misspelled break. So now if we print out break apart word, let's see what it's returning after we shuffle it. So, so if we save this, let's head over here and run it. And if we click this, there's Connecticut, and we're getting an error, shuffle takes, oh, so. <laughs> so we called our function shuffle, and now we're trying to import shuffle, so we're getting an error. So let's change this to shuffler. So our function will be shuffler. Now come down to our button and change that to shuffler. All right, so let's save this. Now if we run this, we can pick a word, Mississippi, and you can see the words, or the letters of the word now are all jumbled up. They've been shuffled, S-P-I-S-M-I-I-P-S-I-S, -I 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 right? So our thing is all shuffled. So, okay, we've got now a list of shuffled things. We now actually have to turn that back into an actual word that we can now put up onto the screen. So that's pretty simple. We just need a little loop, and let's get rid of this print thing. So let's say uh, turn shuffled list into a word. Right, and let's create a, a variable to hold this word. So let's call it shuffled underscore word and set that equal to nothing right now. And actually, we're gonna need to use this somewhere else. So let's just make this global. So let's call this global shuffled word, set it equal to nothing. And now let's create a little loop. So let's go for X in, or we can say for letter in break apart word. We want to take shuffled word and then just plus equal letter, right? So this will just take, it'll loop through that list and take every letter and add it, add equal it to this shuffled word. When the loop is done, the shuffled word will be complete, right? So now, instead of putting up our regular word here, let's take this down here and go print shuffled word to the screen. So instead of it returning word, we want to return shuffled word, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. And so we pick a word, Mississippi, pick another one. This is probably New Jersey. And you can see it's randomly picking a word and it's shuffling it and it's outputting it onto the screen. So we're basically done now. This is the heavy lifting, you know, shuffling these things up and creating a, an actual word. So very, very cool and very easy. So let's close this. And one thing I did notice, let's come up here and give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. So, okay. Now, actually let's run this shuffler when the program starts. So I'm just gonna put that in there so that we don't have to click the button to select a word. So, okay. Now we need to create an entry box so we can type in our answer. So let's go my entry, or we could call this entry underscore answer, and that's an entry box. And we want to put it in root, and let's give this a font equals Helvetica, and let's give it a size of 24 to make the box a little bigger. And let's go entry answer dot pack and give this a pad Y of 20. Okay. Now below our answer, we need an output. So let's go uh, answer underscore label. And this is a label, we wanna put it in root and we want the text to equal nothing. And let's give this a font of Helvetica and I don't know, 18, make it a little bit bigger. And let's go answer label.pack and give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. 
So, okay, now we need to create a button and let's call this answer button. And that's gonna be a button. And we wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal answer. And we want the command to equal answer as well. So let's go answer button dot pack. We don't need to give this a pad Y for now. We'll, we'll fiddle with this in a second. So let's create this answer function. So let's just come up here and create answer function. And this is a function, call it answer. Now, what do we wanna do? We know what the actual word is supposed to be, this word. So let's actually make this global too, so that we can use this word in our other function. So this is the actual answer, right? This is the unshuffled word that we picked originally from our choices or from our choice function here, right? So we can just do an if statement. So we can go if word equals whatever we answered in our entry answer. So we can just go entry answer dot get. What do we wanna do if they equal? Well, that means the answer is correct. Then we want this answer label to equal something. So answer label dot config. And let's give this a text of correct. Else, let's just copy this whole thing and answer label dot config is incorrect. Okay, so let's save this and run it. So uh, I have no idea what this is. Answer incorrect, let's pick a different one. This is definitely Arizona, so Arizona. Answer correct, and we're done. Now you could put these buttons one next to each other or just up and down like this. It, it really doesn't matter at all. If we wanted to put them side by side, we could really quickly just by creating a little frame or something. So let's see, where's our buttons? Here's our button, button. So let's go, uh, my under, or let's call this uh, button underscore frame, and that's a frame, and we want to put it in root, and let's go button underscore frame dot pack, and give this a pad y of twenty. Now inside of here, we could just call button frame for each of these buttons instead of root, and instead of packing this, let's grid them, and let's give this a row equals zero column equals zero. Let's give this a pad X of say 10. I'm just gonna copy this into this one. And so this will be column one to push it over one. So now if we save this and run it, now the, the buttons are right next to each other. Uh, is this New Hampshire maybe? Correct, All right? And when we click this, pick another one, maybe we wanna uh, delete whatever's in here already. So let's do that real quick. So that's gonna be in answer or in, let's see, this guy right here. So let's go entry answer. So let's go clear answer box. Entry answer dot delete from zero to end. That's how we do it. That's how we clear entry boxes. So let's run this again. Type some stuff, boom, that disappears. Main, correct. And maybe we wanna clear this as well. So we can do that. So let's say clear the answer label. And what did we call that thing? Answer label, <laughs> of course. So we could just go answer label dot config, give the text nothing, save this, run it again. Boom, both of those clear. And that's all there is to it. So uh, pretty simple, but you know, some cool stuff we learned how to jumble things, how to shuffle things, how to take things from a list and turn them into a variable and uh, turn them back into words from lists and all kinds of cool stuff. So there are all kinds of cool things we could do with this still, and maybe in the next video we'll look at some of them. For instance, like uh, maybe giving us a hint or something, if we can't figure it out, we could click a button to get a hint. Maybe we'll look at that. 
Um, all kinds of fun stuff you can play with this, and uh, this is a fun one. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.